Hello, my name is Graham Fitch and I'm speaking to you from Steinway Hall in London and I'm bringing you my video demonstration on singing tone um, which complements my article in issue 80 of Pianist magazine. You'll be able to hear that we've got a little competition from construction work that's going on outside for which I apologize we can't do anything about it but I think you'll still be able to hear me above it just about. Now Producing a singing tone at the piano is quite an elusive thing. If I were able to give you the exact recipe for it, I, I'd be a millionaire and in retirement because it's something that everybody wants to be able to do. What I, well, what I can do is to give you some tips as to how you might produce a singing tone, how you can improve your singing tone. Let's start off with the simplest of simple melodies by Robert Schumann, which is from the album for the young. It's simply entitled Melody. Let me play it to you first of all. What you'll have noticed there is that my left hand was softer than my right hand. So Schumann has just given us piano as an indication. How about we think of the right hand as mezzo piano and the left hand as pianissimo. So if you add together mezzo piano and pianissimo, you come up with piano. That's the very first thing we need to be able to do is to play one hand stronger than the other. But let's, let's look at what else needs to be done here uh, to make it sound beautiful. It comes down now to touch. I'm getting on to touch in a little bit, but phrasing is the first thing I'd like to talk about. I don't sing really. Well, I do sing, but I don't think you'd want to hear it. So what I'll do is just suggest that you, you sing this line or indeed any other line that you want to be able to sing and find out where the breathing places would be and also the main arrival points. So if I start here, I might want to feel that the first four notes a leading to there and then I fade off a little bit then I take a breath I'll need to breathe if I'm a singer otherwise I'll go blue in the face now here I might want to again just phrase off taper off at the end of the phrase let me do that in a slightly different way this time I'm going to start with the feeling that the first note is the most important Did you hear what I did then? I made a gradual diminuendo through the phrase. That's another way of doing it. There's no one right way of doing it. But what we do have to do is to grade the sound that we're making and shape and breathe. Now, let's move on to another example. This is an example from Mozart, from the, the Rondo of the K545 Sonata. It's not just a question of being able to play this hand stronger than the other and shape it. We have to also be able to articulate it differently between the hands. Now my left hand is your basic common or garden Alberti bass, um, but within that left hand I've got also the quality of a bass line. Let me just show it to you in two hands. What I was doing there was playing the bass note with my left hand and the other notes of the chord with my right hand. Of course I've got to be able to do that completely with my left hand. Here it is. That note particularly is important. Now the right hand uh, dances above that. I better put my glasses on so that I can see what I'm playing here. Did you hear what I had there? I had some phrased uh, groups in my right hand. I had some staccato notes. So the next element of being able to produce a, a beautiful singing tone is to be able to vary the touches between one hand and the other. It's very important for all, all piano playing actually. Um, for practicing that we can just play scales with, with one hand legato and the other hand staccato. change that the other way around. Let's stick with the scale for, for a little bit and what I'm going to do now, the very first thing I'm going to try to do is to play a scale with each note matching. So each note is exactly the same tonally to the next, I hope. Let's see. Do 
you hear that each note matches its neighbor. Now, how do I know that I've done that? Listening. Listening is the ultimate in, in everything we do at the piano. We have to be able to, not just to hear what we're doing, but to actively listen for what we want to achieve. Now, let me do that with a crescendo. So I start off as softly as I can possibly play. And gradually, as I come to the top of the scale, now I diminuendo down. That's surprisingly difficult to do that really well. I'm not saying that I did do it really well, because there am I talking over the top of myself. Be able to do it the other way around too, starting off strongly and grade each note. Not bad, I could have done a little bit better at the end there. Now the slower we do that, the harder it is. Now do you notice what I'm doing now? This is another element of beautiful singing tone, the overlap in touch. So I don't lift this key up until just after I have played my next one. And that is known as a legatissimo touch. And that makes all the difference to the connections in the melodic line. Let's just look at um, the difference between an active articulate finger. Uh, th this example springs to mind from Schubert. which is the impromptu in E-flat. What I'm aware of there is small striking movements from the tips of my fingers. If I want to produce a, a legato cantabile, which is the basic uh, singing touch, I have to flatten my fingers out a little bit. So I'm playing, instead of on the tip, I'm playing on the pad or the cushion. Now why? Do you see what's going on there in my arm? I'm connecting to my arm, and it's actually my arm rather than my finger that's producing that sound. So instead of a striking, I'm using a stroking motion. That's really important if we want to produce a, a beautiful tone. Um, along with that stroking motion, you'll see that my wrist is breathing. That's the other thing, absolutely essential to have flexibility, looseness in the wrist, and actually quite a, a firm contact with the finger pad to the key. Uh, sometimes we feel we might be uh, stroking. Other times maybe squeezing even, just the feeling of just squeezing and grasping. So that's the difference between the two um, types of touch, the stroking and the striking. I'm going to end this demonstration now with the example from the Jensen Lied. Lied just means a song. Um, this is this we do have in the magazine and I'm going to show you how I'm going to combine all those different elements together to make this hopefully sing. Let me play it first and then I'll go back over it and tell you what I'm doing. That's my climax. That's the secondary climax. Now what I'm going to do is just to show you one really important thing that I consider to be a very vital part of singing tone, and that is matching up tone. Let's look at that secondary climax that's on the second line here. I've got a long note in my right hand which dies. As soon as I play a note on the piano, the sound begins to die. So if I want the next note to sound like it's part of that line, I have to listen very carefully to what's left of the sound. match it up. If I didn't do that, I'd get a horrible bangy accent. If I played this one the same, let me do that. You hear? That interrupts the line. And then I can come out of that um, diminuendo. It's a tiny little hairpin diminuendo that I need to, to make. I need to really be aware of that. Otherwise, we, we're going to get an accent. Join me again in a minute when I'm going to talk about how to produce legato cantabile sound when we've got more than one element going on in the right hand, where the right hand is responsible not only for the tune, but also partly the accompaniment. Join me again in a minute.